And here we are, back on our third Wednesday of the month with uh, Pam Oaks from U.S. Auto Training. And we've got David Mendez with us and uh, from a whole bunch of different things. But we're really glad he's here. He's an AMROC volunteer. He's worked in, in automotive and, uh, the, and just fresh from, uh, I guess, online CES. And uh, we're going to have a nice evening here. I think our topic tonight is automotive uh, service centers and knowing which ones are reliable. Um, so uh, if you want to do a quick intro, Pam, and say hello and Dave, we'll, we'll get the show on the road. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Pam Oaks. I'm a ASC Master Automotive Medium Heavy Truck Trainer and Technician. I'm also an automotive apps engineer. I've done a lot through the decades, an awful lot. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to be bringing part of my knowledge base over to you guys because on next Thursday and Friday, we are doing the ASC P2 uh, pre-exam. So all of you guys that are working in parts or you want to get a job at a parts store, this is the way to go. You need to be ASC certified. Just got my patches here, my truck and my auto. You need to be ASC certified. And um, needless to say, we're going to get you in the right direction next week. Uh, the following week, we're going to do the 609 EPA test. What does that mean? That means that you will be able to handle refrigerant and not get fined by the EPA without having your little card. And that fine is up to $95,284, folks. Yes, you can do a lot with $95,284. So we're gonna get you that little card. You're gonna pass the test. Everybody passes the test. Yep. If you wanna sign up, you sign up for the classes at amrocktampabay.com. And I never introduced myself. I'm Terry Wellingham. I'm the uh, <laughs> executive director for Foundation for Community Driven Innovation that runs Amrock Am Am Fab Lab. Um, and I, I love doing these shows. One of the cool things about uh, what we do has lent itself really well to doing online things. And it's so much fun to be able to reach more people this way and do these programs. And we're really grateful that Pam comes and does the classes and sessions over at Amrock. Um, so highly encourage Enjoy. folks who are, yep, looking for enriching their career opportunities to sign up for the automotive programs we have going, starting with the parts program next week and then the HVAC. So um, I'll let you take it away. And Oh, David, uh, tell us Dave. about yourself. Say hello. I didn't mean to let David off. <laughs> Dave, he's a master too. See, he's a master ASC. See that? Well, that's Actually, right. um, I've been in automotive for over 20 years. Um, I've been in mostly the service um, dealing with customers and everything else. So I do have a little knowledge when it comes to the sales side or the service sales side. Um, but uh, definitely you can always learn and it's always changing and it's always being uh, updated constantly. Oh yes, especially nowadays, right? Yeah. With all the ATIS and everything, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna pull myself out so folks can enjoy the two of you. Um, and uh, we're gonna, you know, have, we'll be able to take questions. If you have questions as they go along, please throw them in chat. Uh, we'll be sharing them. They'll be, watch, they'll be watching the chat window here and uh, we'll answer your questions and help out however we can. So uh, take it away, Pam and Dave. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. You know, Dave, like you said, how many years, decades you've been in the business and you know how important it is to have a shop, a home shop, somebody that you can rely upon. Yeah. And yeah. I had a customer who had recently transferred her allegiance from one shop to my shop. And this is why you want that home shop because they're going to have your back big time. We had a customer and uh, Mrs. Joseph and Mrs. Joseph, she had an old Buick LeSabre that looked like it came off the showroom floor. The wow. steel bumper, I mean, the steel bumper is everything. Okay. I think it was ancient, but pristine. She kept it up. Very nice lady. And uh, one day I was, I don't even know what I was doing up front, but I was up front and she comes storming in the door. She had been our customer maybe for six, eight months. All right. Right. Storming in the door. She goes, what did you do to my car? And I'm like, 
Okay. I don't know, Mrs. Joseph, what's going on? And she says, ever, she says, ever since she changed the oil, which was like four months before, she says, I've been having a problem backing up. And she says, and today that was it. And I'm like, okay, let's go out and take a look at it. I think it's an older vehicle. Maybe, you know, the tranny's giving up the ghost. I don't know. So I walk out the door of the lobby and I look. And my eye goes directly back to the rear bumper because the rear bumper is kind of hanging off the car. Ooh. And I'm like, God, her car is always picture perfect. So I just, and she's going, bah, bah, bah. And, you know, she's just venting. I'm letting her vent. And I go around the back. The whole back end of the car is caved in. And I looked, I says, oh my God. I says, Mrs. Joseph, I says, who hit the back end of your car? And she comes around back and she goes, oh my God. She says, somebody ran into the back of my car. And I says, okay. I says, well, let's, let's figure this out here. And she goes, you know, she says, I thought I saw a little dent before. And I'm like, well, this is a big dent here. And she goes, well, I didn't see it like that. She says, that happened over at Bell's. And I says, Bell's? And she goes, yes. She says, I went in. She goes, I didn't see everything. She goes, everything was fine. I didn't see anything. She goes, I didn't see anything when I came out either. She says, but she goes, but that's when my car went back up. And I'm like, what were you doing? And so she said, I put in reverse and I'd hit the gas and it would only go so far and it stopped. And she goes, I was running that gas and it wouldn't do anything. So then I'd have to put it in drive and move forward. She says, I had to do that five or six times before I could get out of my spot. What Mrs. Joseph was doing, <laughs> committing multiple hit and runs, because the reason why her car wouldn't go backwards is because she was actually making contact with the car behind her in the parking lot. Wow. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. So um, this is why it's good to have, a shop that's in your corner because they could have been pretty nasty for Mrs. Joseph. Oh, yeah. Oh, but definitely. yeah, we, we were there to help her along because she had no family in town and we got her through all of this and we had her back. And that's what your shop's supposed to do is have your back it's supposed yeah. to help you out. I mean, that had nothing to do mechanically with her car, her keep on backing up and ramming into other cars <laughs> And that's why I wouldn't go backwards. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny that she kept, she said it was right after you, the oil change, all that happened. Yeah. And you kind of forget that part. <laughs> forget that part. So, you know, you kind of have to throw this equation in here. Yeah, because, you know, it's, it didn't do that. And that's what we hear is shop, shop people. And Dave, you, you back me on this. It didn't do it until you touched my car. And it's exactly. Like, that is always the, the, the way. Well, when they come in originally and uh, they kind of have a little heat on them when they're walking in the door, yeah. it's always after you touched my car. And then when you get a little more details and you go a little further into it, you kind of you can tell that it, there's a little more to the story. But um, I've seen something similar to that. And it was those little parking stops, the poles that are filled oh, yeah. with mm -hmm. short, but it's just high enough to hit the bumper. And I've seen a very similar one <laughs> to that. <laughs> what did you do to my car? But th that's, that's you, something to my, you changed the tire and my bumper's hanging off now. <laughs> yeah, you've heard it before. <laughs> we've, heard, we've heard them all. And I think, you know, I really think people do that because, mm. you know, they're not in the business and they're not really paying attention. And it's just... They think that's what happened. They're trying to make sense out of the situation. Right. But <laughs> and they're, you know, they're just trying to make sense of it. And, you know, if if the last thing they can think of was, oh, it was in the shop. You know, that's what yeah. they're going <laughs> to So that's why you have to find a good shop, a shop that has your back. And a shop that you know when you drop the car off, that if something does happen, they're going to tell you and say, hey, we're going to make it right. This it's happened. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, 
we were talking about how do you find that shop and what word of mouth. Oh, of course. One, right. Yeah. How many people came into your shop word of mouth, right? A lot, actually, um, probably half of them. Um, depending on the, the shop that I worked at at the time, um, it would be, you know, there, there could be two or three dealerships with the same brand. So you, you kind of have to build rapport to, to continue. And that's a definite. Really, really do. So, you know, I ask a hundred of your friends and relatives, where do you go? <laughs> where do you go to take your car to get fixed? Exactly. But, you know, it works. And then part two is personally, I would look like at local and state level to see if they've had any complaints. Uh, state of Florida, we have, uh, what is that? 1-800-HELP. Yep. yep. FLA. 1-800-HELP FLA. And that is a site that will show you if that shop has had complaints. And if they had, how do they follow through the complaints? And were they charged with a complaint? It's 1-800-HELP-FLA. You can go, actually, any state should have um, a branch or a link to, like, the Better Business Bureau. Um, there's many reputable, you know, contacts to be able to find out information locally about a dealership or a, a, a shop or anybody else that works on cars. And we're lucky here because the BBB, Better Business Bureau, they're actually based here in Tampa. Yeah, yeah. So, Oops, that way. Yeah. So you got the state of Florida, 1-800-HELPFLA.com. So you can go online and look through the Department of Agriculture. Don't ask me why the Department of Agriculture handles all automotive. I don't get it either. Horsepower, maybe the horses, ah, and it's reaching. <laughs> <laughs> well, originally I thought that was because of oil. And oil started from, you know, and it goes all the way down to wheat and, you know, you know, but that's, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Or not. <laughs> you know, I never thought of that. <laughs> or, or, you know, oil comes from decomposing animals. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it's in the Department of Agriculture for whatever reason. And it has been for decades. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So we're going to we're going to check them out through there. So if that passes mustard, then you need to uh, take it on a test drive. Right. I'd take it on a test drive. Go in there and say, hey, could you put some air in my tires? Check my tires. Put some air in the tires. And uh, that's when you start looking. You see how they react to that, because this is a freebie. See how they react to the freebie. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, you can see if one, they're going to charge you to put air in your tires. Two, if they're going to try to sell you something or if they're just going to say, oh, you know, by the way, we also noticed this. And, you know, when you get a chance, just feel free and come back. Or if they're really the the ones that you don't trust are the ones that say, hey, your, your car is going to blow up if you don't have this fixed now, you know, something like that. That, that happens. It does happen. <laughs> And then we hear the stories, right? You know what they said down the street? My car was going to blow up if I went over 35 miles an hour. I'm like, huh? really? Well, I worked at a shop, and I'm not going to say the name. Um, actually, they're probably not in business anymore. Um, but I remember at the time, I was still younger, and um, I was a uh, tire changer, basically. Um and I remember them walking in. It was a family. They came into the waiting room. They sat down and they said that we need a tire. And they kind of pointed out the tire and everything else. Well, you know, we got the work order. We went, took it in the back, put it up in the air. And the manager, I'll say the manager, came in and I was working up and getting the tire price, getting, the, you know, the labor, everything set up. Uh -huh. And he told me, tell them they need four tires. And I was like, they don't need four tires. I just measured the, the tread depth of all these other tires. They're fine. And he told me, he said, basically, you tell them they need four tires. And I'm like, no. So he kind of threatened me. And oh. this wasn't in this state. This was mm -hmm. as far west as you can go. <laughs> so, hint, hint. I can say anything else. But <laughs> I remember walking out and I was like, okay, 
all right, that's how, that's how you want. Okay. So I walked into the waiting room and um, with the work order and everything else. And I basically handed them the ticket and I went, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, a one tire will cost you X amount of money. Um, and you know, you know, I have 10, $15 to pop it on balance it and everything else. Um, the manager is going to come right behind me. He's going to tell you, you need four tires. You don't need four tires. You just need the one. If he doesn't want to do it with four tires, then you just take your business and go over to the next shop over, you know, that type of thing. Um, he walked in right behind me and he heard me saying it. I oh. immediately walked back out into the shop. I packed up my toolbox and I rolled right out the door. And I was like, this, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to work for a place that that's a thief that steals that, you know, that's, that's not right. It's just not right. No. But that's the kind of, that might be why they're out of business, <laughs> but that's, you know, that happens. So you, you gotta, yeah, definitely, you have to trust the people that you're working with. Um, you know, people would come to me by name. Um, hey, Dave, you know, I need this looked at. I don't know what's going on. You know, we haven't looked at and, you know, but yeah, they, you have to trust the people that you're working with. Yeah, you do. And you know, you, you get in that shop and they're going to do that freebie and you're going to see how they react. Like you're saying that they're going to be okay about it and helpful or they're going to like, oh, why are you wasting my time kind of thing? Exactly. But that's going to tell you volumes of what's going on in that shop. You know, you're going to get a chance to go in and look around. I mean, it's not going to be kitchen clean. It's a shop. It's a shop. But it's not going to have garbage laying all over with dust on it that's been there since the Civil War. Right? Right. Exactly. It's, going to, it's going to be orderly. And you, you know, you might have to sit in that waiting room for a little bit. So... You don't want to sit on nasty chairs and things like that and six-month-old magazines in case you forget your iPad or whatever. You know, you <laughs> want to take care. Let's see here. We have one here that um, the mother-in-law was convinced for years that the wake-up strips on the side of the road punctured your tires because she once got a flat when she drove over them. It's a comment from one of our listeners. No, those are <laughs> the other wake-up strips. We don't want you driving on the side like that. <laughs> They're telling you to get back in the lane, but probably what she did, what? Picked up some road debris it's sitting on the side. Got flung Nail. off. Yeah. <laughs> Nail. Yeah. But, <clears throat> yeah, you're going you're gonna to want to take a look around the shop. But another thing, too, is that they're techs. They're working, okay? But does their shop, their, their shirts, do they have holes all over them? You know, uh, do they look like they just don't care? They're not shaven? You know, it's, yeah, okay, they're going to grow a beard, but you can tell that. But, I mean, they're just scruffy looking and dirty. And they come into the waiting room and they have grease all over their hands and all that. No, you want to run. Yeah. You want to run. Sounds like that place far, far west, that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, is the first thing when you walk into a shop, the first thing I would look at um, is, of course, look at the other cars that are in there. Um, one is the place busy. Um, if it's empty and it's like a ghost town, there might be a problem. Um, if it's busy, <laughs> you've got cars everywhere. You know, that means they have good, you know, they have good customers that come in and they keep coming in. Um that's that's I mean, that's one of the first things to look at, you know, and you can do that without even bringing your car in. You can just pull up, walk in and just take a look. But yeah, the how clean it is, how the people look, you know, how, you know, the main counter where, where you're you're doing your paperwork and checking out and everything else. Does it is it just a bunch of parts laying there or does it look like a like a nice business to work with? But yeah, there's there's a lot of things you can just by looking, you can see. Another thing that my mom to mentioned too is that uh, their posted labor rate. They should have their labor rate and what they do. Are they an ASC Blue Seal shop? There's another way to find a shop. ASC.com, they have all the Blue Seal shops. Are sure, they a Blue sure. Seal shop? They've proven their proficiency in those areas that they do the repairs in. True. Whether it's all eight or whatever. There's another venue. Yeah. 
And let's see, we had here, oh, Terry, oh, Terry mentioned, yes, about the mobile technicians out there too. You know, there a lot of them are ASC certified as well. In fact, we had one that went through our class. He got his ASC G1, his 609, and he's out there. With his years of experience, he just finally got him settled. He knows he had to be certified. And, um, you know, there's there's another thing right there. You can rely upon word of mouth and mobile tech. Exactly. <laughs> Check them out. But, yeah, there's another venue. Um, I wrote some notes down here, and I left my glasses in the other room. <sighs> Horrible to get old. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes, the customers in the shop. There's going to be people waiting. Of course. And depending upon if everybody's cranky or, you know, you're going to get cranky if you got a large bill. You're not, because you want to go out to eat. You want to do this, that. You don't want to pay money to have your car run. Last thing you want to do. But you're going to see the rest of the shop. It's like when we would have customers in our lobby at my old shop. I mean, we had this one customer, she'd bring her crossword in and everybody, we'd get everybody involved with the crossword puzzle, for an example. And Mary, Mary Beth, Mary Beth was her name. You can kind of see her in front of me now. She had a Honda Del Sol and somebody ran into it. The insurance company totaled it. And yeah, she loved her Del Sol. Again, that thing was pristine. But, uh, you know, we'd have things like that or we would talk to them because we knew the customer coming in. We'd say, hey, how's your grandson? I heard he was in science fair. How do you do? You know, things like that. You'd get them rolling. Then everybody else would start the chat. You look at that because if people are communicating, they don't have that scowl on their face. I mean, they don't want to be there anyway, but they don't have that scowl on their face. I mean, that's kind of a plus as well. And, and I've always noticed that um, <clears throat> as customers are waiting, um, nobody ever wants to be there. Like you said, you know, it, it's just one of those things. They, you, you, there's a hundred places you want to be versus sitting in a shop waiting. But if you at least communicate, periodically walk over and talk to them, um, yeah. chat with them. Um, you know, have a TV, you know, and discuss something, whatever's on the TV. They, you kind of take up time. You kind of keep them occupied and, you know, like the crossword puzzle. Yeah, most definitely. That's definitely something good to do. But yeah, yeah. That's one of the things you want to look at is stuff like that. I've been through literally thousands of shops the last six years for a company I contract with. They had me go in and so on and so forth. And um, I've seen a lot. And one of my pet peeves, and you hit it when you said TV, you know what they do? They have these infomercials about car repair. It drives me nuts. They go, oh, we're going to sell. Yeah, our customer says, oh, yeah, I need an injection flush. And I'm like, it's not the way to do it. <laughs> I says, you know, in the back of their head, they're like, they're force feeding me more automotive money I have to pay out and I don't want to pay it out. Exactly. So, exactly. I would leave flyers on the tables there, you know, care and feeding for your car. And I wouldn't push it. I'd just leave it there. And those are very effective. Oh yes. Yeah. Nowadays they just sit there, you know, even on the telematics of the cars with their, their, going back and forth with legislation is that, for an example, you drive past a grocery store, yeah. and your car knows you've been there, right? Knows you've been there. Yeah. You'll get an ad that pops up on your little TV screen in the center column there. And it will say, oh, milk, buck 99. That's not right. As you're going past. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's wrong. Let's see here. Here we have a uh, listener says there's a list somewhere of what average prices are for things like brake jobs, transmission repair, et cetera. So people know whether the estimate they are getting, estimates they are getting are reasonable. 
No, it's going to be based on the shop. One labor rate of a shop may be $80 an hour labor rate because that's the cost of doing business for that shop. Another shop may be $90. And region. And region. Region. And part. Good, better, or best. Right, exactly, exactly. So there's no, they have a site, a website that tells everybody what they should be paying for the repair. That's wrong. That's price fixing. Very true. Very true. Price fixing. Yeah. Didn't, didn't Standard Oil get in trouble for that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they were the ones who did or not. I know someone did. Somebody did. Yeah. <laughs> that's price fixing. You can't do price fixing. Even though the, uh, the, uh, Gasoline uh, stations, they kind of sort of do it. You know, you see one go up, everybody goes up. You're not supposed to be doing that. It's supposed to be the cost of doing business. And that's going to be their garage liability insurance, which is absolutely outrageous anyway. Workman's comp. Um, let's see, tools. They have to buy tools. Yeah. Speaking of tools, they have the up-to-date tools, the up-to-date scanners. The text are up-to-date in their training. Are they up-to-date in their training with their scanners? Because not one scanner fixes everything. In fact, you're going to have multiple scanners in a shop, period. And you got to remember those things need to be updated. For example, my ADA scanner, that had to be updated. That was $1,200. Got to update it. That's all this what these shops have to pay out. Um, other scanners may be $500 every six months. It may be $1,000 every year. So you don't know. Exactly right. Um, it all hinges on, on the product, like which, which scanner you have. Um, you know, some of the snap-ons, you know, they give you kind of a, a break. So like you pay for one, sometimes it'll give you a couple updates or something. I'll give you one update. Built in. <laughs> and you have to do it. And if you miss it, you have to pay again. Yes, exactly. That's exactly yeah. right. So Tatiana asks, how do I know if my coolant was changed in its lifetime? There's mm -hmm. litmus strips. Real easy. <laughs> they do. There's litmus strips. They'll tell the pH, everything. Yep. That's okay, these are charged, replaced. Yeah. You can get those at our parts store. Or you can have the shop do it and show you the result. But yeah, the, the equipment's expensive. Then you have the shop management. And you have to have shop management now because the labor guides are built into the shop management. No more books. So they right. you're you're stuck. So you have to have the shop management. And those can go from $170 a month up to well over $200 a month for shop management. Oh, yeah. Gives you electrical diagrams, so on and so forth. And is it worth it? Yeah, well, you have to have it. And if you don't pay it, then you lose your whole entire customer base. So you're a captive audience there. So there's more money they have to pay out. Training, they got to pay out in training because the guys need to be trained. You have to have somebody trained in there because even though they says, well, they'll leave if, if they know too much. Well, what's more expensive? Somebody who knows what they're doing and they leave or somebody who doesn't and they're screwing everything up. True. <laughs> and, and internal shop, there was always somebody learning. There's always somebody, you know, in training. There's always, you know, your, your experienced one. So you have the, the shop foreman or the team lead. Yeah, so you always have, you know, the better one and then the backup or the one in training. But um, they usually help each other. They don't usually work alone. So mm -hmm. one will always, you know, if they, if they have a question, they will ask the more experienced one. And that's the kind of shop you want. The one that will share information with each other, not the ones that, you know, don't talk to me. I'm working in this corner by myself. But yeah, I definitely agree with that. My shop, they would work with each other, okay? And then somebody would leave and move or once in a while or whatever the case may be. And so you'd have to bring in a replacement, right? Right. I made techs in the shop evaluate the replacement. And if they didn't like them, out. 
Wow. And you know what? Everybody got along. Yeah. Everybody was happy. I like that. Everybody was training out. They, it was so funny because when we would go to hire a tech, I'd talk to them. Then I'd have maybe the assistant talk to them. Then the tire manager would talk to them. And then I'd grab a couple of guys from the shop. I said, give me five minutes. And they would talk to them. And meanwhile, we'd go out to their car, and I don't care if the car was 40 years old, okay, or if it was new, but we'd look inside the car, and we'd look around to see if the car was clean on the outside and see if they had a bunch of junk inside the car because that was going to tell us what was going to be in that bay. We don't want somebody with pigsty in their car. True. Very true. Very true. So they would talk about that, too. Do you have anything in this car? Nope, he's okay. Okay. <laughs> you know? And then after a couple of days, we started seeing things. they talk and they'd say, okay, let's talk. Time out. Yeah. I have Sorry. seen a lot of mechanics that have uh, messed up cars or, you know, their, their cars are limping along because they work all day and everything else. But, yeah, I mean, I do understand that. But, yeah, you're right. You're right. If they take care of their own personal property, they're going to take care of your property. Yeah, see, they're not going to have McDonald's food bags in the back seat. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's what you're looking for. You exactly. know what I mean? Stuff like that. But we have somebody here saying, how can you tell if a technicians are ASC certified in a shop? Well, they should be wearing their patches. One is the patch. And then their certificates should be on the wall. And if they're not on the wall, ask. Yeah. Because you want to... They would be proud of them, so they would they would show them somehow. They would mm -hmm. represent them or show them somehow. Exactly. Exactly. Warranties. Now we always, we had the old standby of five fifty. Five minutes out of the shop. <laughs> fifty seconds down the road. Or the warranty, part of the labor warranty. doesn't work like that anymore. I don't know. People just got fussy. <laughs> so we, had, we had it. The nickname on ours uh, was curbside. Curbside? You hit that curbside, you're done. The warranty's over. <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. <laughs> that was just a joke. <laughs> and I, ours was too, but I like that one, curbside. But they have warranties, and they have warranties. You know, if it was a, a junkyard part, say you had to get a... Uh, Lower control arm out of the junkyard, which that's fine. I would yeah. never put anything electrical out of the yard. But that may only have a 90-day warranty where you may have a factory part replacement. What is that? 12 months, 12,000 miles. And now a lot of the shops, they have hooked up with uh, parts houses. And the parts houses have programs where they'll have two-year, 24,000-mile warranty. Have you heard of any others? Um, those are the only yeah. ones I've seen. I worked with, uh, you know, actually for a parts uh, online parts sales, and we dealt with a lot of different vendors. Um, and about half of them were like uh salvage yards or you know anything that that they would pull parts. Um, and they would give us like a 12 12, like a 12 month, 12,000 mile, it was um, decent, but and, and it was good because. If it failed, and, and I'm like you, I wouldn't order anything electrical from them, but uh, because there's no telling what the accident, why that car is there in the junkyard, anyways. But um, if a part failed, you know, they would fess up. I mean, they'd say, "Okay, well, we'll, we'll get you another one." And and if they didn't have one on the lot, they would get us one, um, as long as it's within a certain part, you know, time mm -hmm. warranty and everything else. But you know, they, it, it's kind of like when you want to find the shop that you trust. The shop wants to find the parts vendor that they trust also. So oh, yeah. they work Big together. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Every day, constantly. In fact, sometimes I'll travel down to my old stomping grounds. You know, I still pop into the parts store, the parts house, and I'll say, hey, guys, how's yeah. it going? And everybody's still there. Actually, one just retired because of COVID. Uh, yeah. He had asthma real bad. He, he couldn't come in anymore. But yeah, they're all there. That's they're fine. all there. Yeah, That's we knew it. them by name. We knew them everybody by name. Mm -hmm. Well, when I used to call you guys when I was down there, 
I knew all of you guys by name. And when we first met, I had to close my eyes because it's like, I know this person. Where do I know this person? I closed my eyes and went, hey. You, you know my voice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, we're 120, 130 miles away from you, you know? So I never saw face to face, but I was like, that's it. That's exactly so, right. Exactly right. That was, was pretty wild. Yeah. That was pretty wild. Oh, show and tell. Do the show and tell thing. Make sure your shop does the show and tell. This is what your brake pads look like. It's what they're supposed to look like. I used to always do that. Do I would bring the part to the customer to show them. Or you bring the customer out to the car and point and say, okay, this is not what it's supposed to look like. And then show them the new one and say, this is what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> so, and then usually that sells it right there or that explains your situation. And you can, you can tell them better uh, like why they need to do it now or why they need to do it in the next month or the next 10,000 miles you know, or something like that. But yeah, show and tell is always the best way to go. And you know, they feel good about it too. Of course. Say, okay. Yeah. I get it now. At least that they way. Get it. In, their, in their head, they're understanding. All right. Exactly. And they're not thinking, oh, they, these people are shysters or cons. You know, that, that is the part. That's my car. And then this is what it looks like new. So if your brake pads are paper thin, you show it to them and you show them how chunky a, a new one is. They're like, oh, okay, go ahead and change them. <laughs> or, you know, they'll, they'll, oh, what prices do you have? So definitely, that's, that's the way to go. I had a conversation with another trainer who's out of state. And he usually takes care of the family cars, the extended family cars. You know how that goes. Right. All right. Experiences. All right. Needless to say, he was on the road and they had a problem with one of the vehicles. So he told them to take it to a certain garage because he knew the guy. So he thought he knew the guy. And the guy says, yeah, you need brake pads. And you need a caliper. Anyway, he ended up putting brake pads and just popping them, slapping them on rotors that were warped. Oh. And then he replaced only one caliper. And, you know, you do brake hydraulics in pairs. And this guy's a master who was doing this. And then he charged him $400. So... Sometimes, the reason why I'm saying that, sometimes you know somebody has a great reputation, but you need to ask them when the last time you've been there, because in this case, this trainer's case, it had been quite a while, and evidently they changed for whatever reason for, for worst, and he just put his family in. The guy even knew that the trainer was going to look at it afterwards, okay, but he still did this. So you can only imagine what would happen had somebody not known any better. It's kind of sad, but like you said, show and tell. They would have taken everything out of it, right? Well, and I, I, I definitely have seen that before too. You know, either they're cutting corners, or they're, you know, they're they're having an issue of they they're running out of time. They need to leave or something like that. Well, we don't need to cut corners this is someone's life that that's on those brakes or on those wheels or you know make sure the lug nuts are tight you know don't cut corners there's the, and and that goes back with if the shop is full nine times out of ten it's a it's a reputable shop you know it's a shop that people go back to um mm -hmm. if it's empty beware yeah. run <laughs> it's, it's gotta run be a fast, run far <laughs> Very true. The how and the how and why. Customers, you get in your show and tell, but sometimes you won't. So you're going to have to prompt it. And I always tell everybody to ask how and why. Why do I need this on my car? Show me why. And then part two is how. Oh, how much is it going to cost? Give me an estimate. I want to see the estimate. And then the state of Florida, when they give the estimate, well, the first thing, when they take your car in, you have to sign some paperwork. And that paperwork, <coughs> the important thing is, is how much it's going to cost. 
and you need to decide whether you want the phone call or just let them go ahead and fix it or let them go ahead and fix it within a certain amount. And you have to check the box and sign. Exactly. Don't leave those boxes blank because you don't want some unscrupulous shop to go in there and make their own check mark where they feel it's going to benefit them. So you have to sign for that estimate. Make sure you get that estimate. And they can't go over that estimate by $100 unless you say it's okay. Right. A lot of states don't have that, unfortunately. But we're, we're lucky that we have that protection for the consumer. But you need to ask how much it's going to cost and how is it going to affect the car? How is it going to make it run better longer? Or is this just a patch? Or what, what's the deal here? Explain it to me in layman's terms. And that's how I used to do it. I used to always explain it. Um, and I never used the, you know, the, the mechanics lingo or anything like that. I'd always say it, you know, right down to earth so they could understand. Um, and usually it, I would explain it um, if they were there. I would explain it at, during the show and tell. Um, you know, why you need this, why you need that. Um, nine times out of 10, I mean, the nine times out of 10, the car drove there. So it may actually drive out. So you just got to explain, you know, why you need it and how soon you need it. Um, like the, uh, the question about the coolant, um, the reason you need it. Um, you know, if, if it's bad and it's mostly water, um, it can actually eat up the interior. You know, your radiator could get eaten up. If it's uh, brake fluid that's that's mucked up and, you know, and it's, it's got a lot of debris in it, um, you're clogging up. Your, your hoses are going to falling apart inside. You know, you're, there, there's a lot of issues that happen that people don't understand. And mm -hmm. they come to you for a reason, not just to fix the car, but they trust you. So if, if, you, find, if you find a shop that you can trust that is, that is worthy you know, they, they will listen. So you want to tell them the truth. And that's what keeps them coming back too. Cars don't lie. No, they do not lie. <laughs> <laughs> they tell the truth every time. Exactly. People mask stuff. They try to hide stuff. Ah, oh, that car is going to tell the truth every single time. We had a <laughs> customer who had a fleet service and used to handle the fleet. And what did we do? Oh, it was an old ranger who had plugs, wires, et cetera, et cetera. So we swapped him out. It was close to 100,000 miles. He's getting a misfire. Swapped it all out. Make the long story short, about four or five days later, guy comes screaming. The employee comes screaming, you screwed up my car. Like that. It runs like garbage on the highway. Like that. And he says, Okay. So we pulled it in, and our scanners are advanced enough. We could go into mode six, the engineering side, and things like that. We're checking, we're looking, and we're like, what's this? And there's, in the background in this particular one, there's a code that will light up on the dash, but it's it's basically for driving the vehicle beyond its mechanical limits. <laughs> so... We found out, we looked it up in like 104 miles an hour. That was the mechanical limits of this Ford Ranger. Ford Ranger. Four, 104, 106, something like that. And we went, oh, you're so busted. <laughs> <laughs> he called up his, his boss, the owner, and said, you need to come down here and take a look at this. Here we go, show and tell. He says, you need to see what the scanner's showing. And we can... We can see where his problem was, and driving fleet vehicles. <laughs> I think I don't know. This was so far back, but I remember that coming up, and we were like, just like Ford used to have in the late '90s, they had a Code 77. Did you ever hear of a Code 77? I want to say I have. I can't remember what it what it stands for though. Code 77 basically was the loose nut behind the steering wheel is driving like an idiot. <laughs> and it would actually come up. Code 77. We, we use that. That's right. That's exactly right. You hear that? 
his way, way back. So we know how the person's driving. And now with everything else involved, I mean, there's no getting out of it. Oh, of course. So cars don't lie. Yeah, code 77. Now they tell the, the mechanic or the technician much more than they used to. So they tell oh, yeah. a lot. Oh, Do definitely. Codes and, and information. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Did the battery run out? Did it, was it let run dry? Was it, you know, they, they can tell you a lot more information. And it's just going to get worse and worse. More and more information is going to be out there for the technician, and it has to be. Yeah. Because there's so much more that you guys have demanded on these vehicles. You want them to have great MPG. You want to have air conditioned seats. You want to have the heated seats. You want to have your navigation. Yeah. Now with LIDAR and self-driving cars. That's that's a while from now. Right now we're in a heavy uh, level two. Yeah. Because that's kind of sort of what I do with a contractor right now. And what we're developing, I can't tell you what we're developing, but uh, basically it's for the autonomous vehicle. The autonomous vehicle is what we would consider level five. But to successfully have an autonomous vehicle, fleets of them on the road, you kind of have to get that other stuff off the road. It's like when we used to have drum brakes on cars, then we went to disc. And how much better the disc stopped, the stopping distance between the drum oh, yeah. and, the, and the drum started fading away. And then we had ABS, and the ABS stopped even quicker than the four-wheel disc. And so now that kind of all leveled off and evened up again. <sighs> kind of probably a bad analogy, but that's what we're going to be doing with autonomous vehicles. And no, it's not a good analogy, yeah. We have, we have to get the old stuff off the road. And right now, the old stuff on the road is like 12 years old plus. Right, right. Still running. No reason why to get rid of it. It's still running. So that has to go off to the side, too. Yeah. But even, even driving down the road, if you notice that in Florida, that we have a lot of manufacturer cars here in the winter. You know why? Because a lot of, <laughs> a lot of the ATIS does not like snow. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the lane? I don't know. It's just all snow. What is this? <laughs> You're gonna figure this stuff out. So we got a ways yet to go. Um, oh, yeah, there's a lot more programming involved, a lot more technology that has to be implemented before we can go that far. But yeah. Oh, by the way, here's here's a tidbit just for you guys to know. <coughs> Any car, I'm just going to tell you any car, because not all vehicles do this, but any car out there, you don't stand in front of it anymore if it's running or if it's or if you start it up. You just don't, st you, people stand in front of it and they're talking, they're talking with their neighbors, you don't stand in front of them anymore. And the reason why is because if it has radar, um, that's radar, guys, and there's a lot of vehicles out there that have it now. That's radar hitting you. It's, it's searching for objects. Those beams are coming out, and they're penetrating you. So the form of radiation, radiation, radar, radar, radiation. <laughs> the guy who invented it for the army, he figured out the heat energy in it because he had Hershey Kisses in his pocket. Did you ever hear this? I did. I have heard that in the past. And then they were popping popcorn and everything, right? And then they he invented the Amana radar range. Exactly. It went to a, to a microwave or a microwave, uh, yeah, the microwave. A microwave oven. Yeah. The thing was like this big because I remember my mom had one and it had like just enough room to put a plate in. And that was it. Yeah. <laughs> that was, was it. Huge, the, the, it was huge. It was huge. Yeah. It was huge, but the hole was this <laughs> big. <laughs> like that. So that's what we got bombarding us in the front of the cars, guys. Please don't stand in front of the cars when they're when the key is on, the running. Yeah, don't. Nope. You're sitting there chatting. Turn it off. All the way off. Talk. Stand in front of them as much as you like. And I tell the technicians when I go out, I says, you know, guys, don't stand in front of the cars anymore when they're running. You stand off to the side, off on the sides, not in the front. Because the toolbox directly in front of the cars. 
Yeah. So it's popping back and forth. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I tell them to put a fender cover over it, kind of block the beam and let the beam just bounce. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, don't stand in front of them, please. That's a good tidbit right there. That's very good. Yeah, I see these, they have these ATIS uh, classes and everything for the guys trying to learn it. And I'll, I'll just sit bit in the background and I'll put a phony name in because I don't want anybody to recognize it's me. Right. And I'll just sit back and I'll watch some of this and you know they don't tell anybody this, and I'll put it in the chat thing. Tell them not to stand in front of the car. No. And they don't know it's you. No, I do that with all of them. I don't. I don't want to, you know, because I want to. I just want to see what's going on, how what the people are being told out there. True. And, uh, sometimes you find out if you have another trainer. To me, it doesn't bother me because then I get to talk to them and say, hey, do you ever see this? Do you ever see that? You know, and I kind of include them because it's a lot more fun. But a lot of the guys, mm, no, they'll just kind of sort of clam up. I found that out hard way. Well, and, and it's good. That. Like, for example, the shops that you go there and talk to them like that, that means that they're they're training their technicians to keep up. Um, yeah. They're staying on top of the training. Uh Again, that's a shop that you want to go to. That's not exactly. you know, not one that stopped, you know, paying for training ten years ago, and everybody's just kind of winging it from there on out. But can't do know, that. That is the shop, the type of shop you want to look for. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. It really is. I'm. Uh, oh, by the way, we're going to be doing our ASC G1 prep, and that's starting February 9th. For you guys, if you're interested, you just want to learn more about your vehicle, we're really going to get a little involved with it. But you will, too, and you'll learn because, again, we do it in layman's terms, and it's all about training. And where are you going to do that? Uh, they're at AMROC. Right at AMROC. Right at AMROC. Right at AMROC, yes. We ha I have some other training venues that I'm doing with other companies, but this is with AMROC. Now, can they contact you or can they, is this something that, um, do they need to just contact AMROC for like scheduling and times and everything else? Huh? Uh, actually, uh, there's Terry. There's Terry. <laughs> they reappear. Yeah, this has been great. I mean, we, we talk about, you know, and provide all this training that you bring into AMROC and, you know, it, it translates hopefully into good car service for people who go to the different shops around Tampa Bay and get decent service and the people who are working there get decent pay. And uh, I, I assume if you've got, you know, the ASC certified mechanics, you know, they're getting paid well, they're happier working at a good shop. Um, mm -hmm. And that's probably another way to tell, you know, that you, like you said, that, you know, you're, they you're tend to stay. Yeah. They tend to stay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So to, to take part in any of the programs, you can go right to our website. Actually, if you go to the work skills tab on, on uh, amrocktampabay.com, you can register for any of the upcoming programs. I need to update the form, but even if you just put your info in there now, we'll reach out to you as we as we rev up. Um, and, uh, you know, the more pe folks we can get through these programs, the better, you know, things are, especially around the University Mall area, things are changing. Um, and uh, you know, it's a good time, good opportunity to get a good career, you know, so yes. uh, make the most of it. Very true, and very true. With Ron, when he went through it, what? In about six, eight months, mm -hmm. he had his own mobile mechanics place. Yep. Yeah. And he's been, he was working on that, but now he was able to better do that, go through the whole entrepreneurship program on top of it. Yeah. Uh, so he can provide that. So. Which you guys do right there, the entrepreneur program. That's yeah. coming up too, isn't it? Um, yeah. We're having an info session on that next Wednesday, the 27th, I think. Um, and uh, as we wrap up for the second cohort there, we had you know, seven new businesses start and two relaunch, two rebrands and a relaunch and uh, really successful. We're excited and ready to do that again. Um, and also there was a, there was a, uh, I, I saw Clinton was on there. He's actually here in the shop working with the drones. Uh, and he'd been talking about the ionization level, I guess on the, on the radar. Uh, so he's got some stuff on there. We'll have to take that one on later on. Well, well it's a good, it's a good conversation piece. 
Um, and I think that would be really fun to, to do a session on on uh, the lidar and, and those things oh, because yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it before, uh, you know, just peripherally. Uh, but a lot of the cars have it now, and uh, you know, I think it'd be really nice to understand what it is, how it works, um, and how it affects you know people's driving and vehicles and everything else. So there's going to be more and more and more. Yeah. This year, 2020, 2022. Can you believe it? 2022 model year. Yeah. You're going to have some type of Vetus. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. And so and that's the other reason you want people to, you want people to be trained to know how to handle all those things. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's a yeah. one, yeah. one degree off, just one degree off. And 60, 60 feet is one foot. Yeah. So if you have lane departure or ACC, right? That's that's a foot. You're going to run into somebody, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's between running into somebody or staying safe. Yeah. And, and then they do things too. Like the one we have is overly sensitive and it, uh, you know, the, on the, on the van and it'll, it'll start beeping at us when there's nobody around, you know, and, and it's, it's just, something up. what's that? It's picking something up. It's picking something up. Yeah. The cat's stuck in the engine. I have no idea. So. <laughs> oh my God. How many times have you seen that? Huh, Dave? How many times? You popped a hood and there's a cat in there. A live cat. Having they kittens or something. Yeah. <laughs> in there. I remember one time Roger popping the hood. Roger was a, he's tall. He's a big guy. And he popped the hood and the cat came flying out. We all just happened to see it. And he he jumped off that ground. I saw ten feet. Now, and he went up in the air. Do they charge extra for extracting cat extraction? That there's a price for that. But <laughs> the, that exact same story happened to me in a shop, and it actually we had we we brought the cat home, and it became our family cat for. Really? I can't I can't remember how long we had we had it, but. Yeah, I mean, it was mad. It was upset. Mm -hmm. It uh, it literally jumped out of the engine. The mechanic freaked out, and it went straight into our tire room, and it would not leave there for two days. I had to come in with my wife, and we actually we we brought in some like tuna and stuff like that. We were right. able to get it in the cage, get it out, and let and got it out of there. But it it was a family cat after that, so. <laughs> <laughs> It what happened. You what did you name it? What uh, did you name it? It was a. Uh, it's kind of like a restaurant, so it was Tippins, is what we named it after that. But that's yep, that was the cat. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Now I have to check. Like, to but yeah, it was <sighs> it, it, perfect cat. After that, um, we didn't have any issues, and it, it was it was stayed with oh, us. That's funny. That's pretty yeah. good. I love that. Yeah, we used to work. I used to work next door to. A, I worked in a photo shop, and there was a vet next door, and somebody had driven up and had a cat inside their engine. They couldn't get out, um, and they drove very carefully and slowly over to the vets and said, "I can't get this." I remember there were like five people in their car trying to get this little cat out of her engine. You know, but things and get. They are not hard. happy when they come out. They are not <laughs> happy at all when they come out. Hey, did you happen to see a lot of snakes by the cooling fan? No, I've seen one. Um, I yeah. see more cats in there than anything. Um, but yeah, definitely, I've seen bird nests. Yeah, um, squirrels. Of rats, rats get rats. in there and chew up the wires. Rats, they yeah. wires. But yeah. Yeah, now yeah. the wires have the soy on it. They're made out of soy. Yes. They taste better. <laughs> this tastes better. <laughs> this woman sued Toyota because the rats got in there. Was eating the wiring harness, soy based. So she was wow. blaming it on that. It got dismissed. She didn't get anything. Yeah. Troy went out. That the is things you learn on our consumer car chat. I'll tell you. I just. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is content. You're not just not going to get anywhere. You know. <laughs> Very true. You know what we need to talk about next is how to be a good customer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't hurt. No. The do's and the don'ts. Huh? 
the do's and the don'ts. The do's, we, we need to do that. We could do that. You know, Dave, I'm sure, has a ton of stories, especially uh, being at the dealership, too. Yeah, I have more than you can, I can probably even remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was looking to see Tatiana had a question and she was talking about while living in Tampa, we have rats. Yes, we do have rats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Florida. Welcome to Florida. We've got everything. At least down up here, we don't have the iguanas or the uh, monitored lizards and true pythons. True. Very true. And our technicians are specially trained in Florida. <laughs> we we know you probably you pop the hood and you kind of stand back. You don't stick your head in right away. <laughs> if you hear a hiss, you back away. You back away. <laughs> back away from the car. Exactly. Well, this has been great. I really enjoyed this. I always do. Um, you know, the, the car tips were good. I did put in there the 800 Florida number uh, URL has changed. Um, I had actually, yeah, they changed it. Actually, when I went up there, you get a, you get a website page that says we've moved. Uh, and they and I put the I put the new address in there, um, but it is the Department of Agriculture, so they're they're the place to go to check on any consumer complaints on any kind of company. But you can actually specifically look up automobiles um, or, or repair centers and things like that. So uh, that's a really really good one. So you so can call one eight hundred help. You can yeah you can call them. So uh, they're really good resources. Always nice to have you know all the all the cool info you provide. Um, if you want to see Pam in person, sign up for the parts class or the HVAC. Anybody can do either of those. I mean, the HVAC, especially, we had a bunch of us do that. So you can work on your car in your, in your garage and not have to worry about anything. And it was informative and, and really good to do. Um, but go ahead and sign up and uh, we'll be back again next month, third Wednesday of the month. Um, I'm sure we'll have a good topic. Not sure what it'll be, but I'm sure it'll be awesome. Maybe we'll do the how to be a good customer. <laughs> That'd be a fun one to do. Yeah, how to how to how to make the right sounds for what your car is making the sound your car is making. I was never very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> We'd sit there and say, "What did it sound like?" <laughs> to each other, you know what I mean? Because one of the other trucks would say something. What was that? <laughs> you had a shop right through an answer or something, you know. We'll have a car I mean, you know, in doing car. that. Yeah. We'll have a car impression, car sounds impression night or something, you know, for improv. Cool. Improv car auto night. <laughs> what would this sound be? <laughs> That'd be really good. I can name that tune in one note. <laughs> that would actually be fun to actually have the auto sounds queued up and play them. And I try to identify what they are because my car started making sounds, but, um, you know, and I want to know what they are, but that could be really fun. You know, what kind oh, yeah. of. That's, game. That's brilliant. That's yeah. brilliant. That would be so much fun. We can cue that up and, and you know curate that between now and the next session and, and uh, do some car sounds. Oh, we got to do something with that. That's brilliant. Wouldn't that be I, fun? Dave? That would be awesome. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll put it. We'll put them up there, and you guys have to guess them. <laughs> and then we can just, then we can discuss them. And we have prizes, so the person yeah. can figure it Ooh, out. Oh, we can have Ron on. See how many Ron can identify and stuff. So. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes, that would be I, good. I have an auto. We can have a. Uh, we can actually push it out in advance and have the local uh, mechanics come and, you know, tell us what the sounds are and see which ones, how good they are at identifying them. Awesome, awesome. I like that. Yeah, I do. Too. <laughs> we got to do some of that. That would be a lot of fun. I think so. But thank you again. I think uh, you know we're at seven o'clock, and oh, uh, right. yeah, we are. Um, so I think we can call it an evening here. You guys hang around. We'll chat a little bit when we go off air, but thank you so much for, for, uh, coming on again and, and sharing all the cool stuff you did and the conversations. We rely a lot on our vehicles and we love training people about how to repair and fix them and, and get well-paying jobs. And it's important to know how to take care of our vehicles as well. So thank you very, very much. Thank and you. We will see all of you in Facebook land and YouTube uh, again, the third Wednesday of the month. And we will see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.